Okay, so we are live. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, we are live both on our webinar platform and also on uh, our YouTube channel. So for the viewers that are watching us right now on YouTube, if you would like to ask questions to our speakers and participate uh, in the discussion, so please register by the link that you see in the stream description. My name is Ulena Grinyuk. I'm CE Director at the SME Banking Club, and I will be your host today. And today we talk about open banking, used or missed opportunity for development of financial products. And my guests today are Kamil Goslavski, Senior Key Account Manager at CRIF Poland, and Anna Kavalik, Open Banking Business Analyst at CRIF Poland. Hello, Kamil and Anna. I'm very glad to have you today. Have you? Uh, yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, so uh, before before we go to the topic, let me very shortly mention uh, our organizational information. So uh, we are recording this webinar. So right after uh, we finish, you will receive the link to the video and, and to the presentations. Uh, we plan, so our webinar is scheduled for 45 minutes. And we start from the presentation and right after it, we will have a QA and a session. And I invite you to participate and ask, ask your questions uh, in the chat. So let's, let's go to our topic. Uh, as you all probably know that from September uh, 2019, uh, due to the PSD2 regulation, uh, banks are obliged to publish open APIs and so thus provide access to third-party providers. And the main thing and the main advantage of, uh, of open banking uh, is data sharing, and this should have become an, an innovation trigger. So let us discuss if it is so. Uh, at the moment, at the C region, let me show uh, with you um, two slides uh, on that. So. Um, we see that, for example, uh, account aggregation uh, for the business customers, I would focus uh, or stress this because for the individual customers, a picture looks a bit uh, another way. So for the business customers, account aggregation due to PSD2 was implemented by less than 10% of the banks in the CE region and uh, open APIs are provided to the customers, let's say directly to, to customers, uh, is uh, around, uh, uh, so 25% of the banks offer, uh, offer this to their business customers. So this is the, um, the, the, the situation of implementation in the CE region. So one of the examples uh, uh, is and one of the first banks implemented this in uh, CEE and namely in Poland was ING Bank uh, Shlonski. And for the private individuals and private entrepreneurs in their application, they uh, integrated, they did this account integ integration, aggregation, and which allowed customers to have information on the account balances in um, different in all the banks that they have accounts and also to monitor account uh, history uh, as far as i know at that moment for business customers the next uh, uh, apis meaning for example um, availability of proceeding transactions is not um, available at the moment um this is this is what we have and uh, we have been also discussing for last uh, two years uh, that the banks were ready and were thinking on let's call it monetizing open banking uh, and open APIs as they invested huge amount of financial resources and also people resources to that implementations to comply to comply with the EU requirements and some of the banks also in the region uh, announced that they uh, make available premium APIs but my feeling at the moment is that this started to slow down a bit, at least for the for the business customers. This offer is not developing much, so let's let's discuss it, uh, Kamil and Anna. Uh, I'm passing over to you to share your experience and how you see it in Kiev, Poland, and then uh, let's have a discussion. Okay, 
Thank so you. first of all, thank you very much, Elena, for the invitation and opportunity to, to share uh, our perspective and thoughts about uh, open banking. Uh, I will start uh, maybe with some kind of open question about the use or missed opportunity uh, in case of uh, open banking. Uh, and maybe we'll try together to, uh, to better understand and uh, answer for, for that question. Uh, to be honest, I uh, rather based on a Polish market because of the fact that uh, I represent Kriv in Poland and I'm responsible for the banking industry. So that's why I'm, I'm just focused on, on that uh, area. Uh, so, uh, during my presentation, I have a couple of points. Uh, first of all, I want to, let's say, introduce the CRIF as a, a company. Uh, I will uh, talk uh, a little bit about the current status of open banking uh, uh, at the Polish market, uh, some use cases, uh, and uh, the, the next, let's say, open question about the leaders on that area. And I want to share my uh, expression about the risks, challenges, and opportunities. And so, two words about the CRIF. Uh, we are a software company and uh, we cooperate uh, over the 40 uh, countries uh, over the, the world. Uh, we have more than 6,000 uh, great experts to support our uh, customers. And uh, what is, uh, let's say, uh, most important uh, for our customers, we uh, we cooperate with more than uh, 10,000 financial institutions and uh, more than 80,000 business uh, customers. And in case of our um, capabilities, we we have uh, um, uh, let's say some ambition to to create and provide for our customers end-to-end -end, uh, services and solutions. Our core business is uh, the information, the data. Uh, we, we are uh, one of the biggest uh, credit bureau in, in Europe. Uh, so that is the, the core. Also, we have a solution in the area of business information. And uh, what is very, let's say, uh, important and sexy a subject on the market uh, about the ESG area and uh, rating, scoring, and support customers in uh, in that uh, in that case. And what is important, uh, maybe from uh, from uh, today's discussion perspective, we have uh, a couple of digital platforms solutions like open banking and onboarding solutions, and also let's say we call it transformation services like advanced big data analytics, risk management uh, and consulting, and also uh, systems like uh, decision engine, uh, workflows uh, and uh, something like that. But I, I don't want to focus on it at the moment. So uh, I, I know that there is uh, obvious, but I want to mention about the types of the services. Uh, according to open banking, we have three types, uh, ICE, account information service, PEACE, payment initiation service, and CAF, confirmation of the availability of funds. And to be honest, as a CRIF, we, we can cover uh, all of that scope. Uh, and we we trying to uh, support uh, globally and locally our customers in, in that areas. Uh, but uh, at the moment, the, the first one, ICE, is the, uh, let's say, the most popular piece is also popular, but uh, maybe it's not so uh, easy to implement. So that's why uh, that, that is the reason why uh, not every financial institution uh, at the moment have such uh, possibilities. And uh, I think that it's worth to mention that it's not only connected with the personal accounts, but also with the uh, foreign currency accounts, saving accounts, credit card accounts, and business accounts. Uh, as Olena mentioned, Maybe the, the business uh, and customers uh, are not do not have such possibilities like personal uh, customers at the moment, but it's also uh, possible. Uh, about the possibilities of, of use, uh, we can uh, split it for uh, two categories uh, from the customer and user perspective. So uh, based on uh, 
web banking portal or mobile application, uh, the customers have uh, possibility to get an insight into a balance and history of transactions, and also they can make tran transfers from the different bank account uh, based on, on one of them. And uh, from the financial institutions and, and the banks, uh, there is a possibility to confirm uh, customers' credit worthiness and identity. But uh, of course, nothing happens without the consent of the, the customer, the, the user, and that is the crucial point of, of that kind of services. Uh, on that slide, uh, I want to mention and maybe indicate a couple of steps how we can use uh, from the customer and user perspective, ICE solution on the left side and the PEACE solution on the right side. And maybe I, I will try to uh, find some uh, differences between, between it. So ICE is the most popular uh, service, as I mentioned before, and maybe because of the fact that it's very quick and easy uh, and user-friendly uh, solution for, for the customers because we just have to log in to into our bank account, then we choose the different uh, bank account to link it, and uh, and then after the constant process and authorization, we 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 have visibility to uh, to the data from the different uh, bank account. But uh, in case of the peace solution, on the right side uh, of the slide, uh, we can uh, we can see that there is uh, more steps and it's more difficult uh, for the end user because uh, of course we have to log into our bank account then uh, we we have to initiate the, the transfer of the uh, the transfer from the different bank account and then we we have to um, we we will be uh, redirect to the different bank account and we have to uh, next log in to a different bank account so i think that that is a crucial point and that could be the reason why at the moment the financial institution like a bank banks uh, uh, not even implement uh, in the whole scope of that service because of the fact that it's uh, um, uh, let's say it's uh, it's not so easy it's hard to implement and uh, it's uh, not uh, let's say uh, easy uh, for the customer to use it uh, it's not user friendly uh, because we, we after the next uh, login we have to authorize and uh, make the uh, transfer and then we will be redirect to the, the initial bank account. So I think that uh, maybe that is the, uh, the reason uh, why uh, that peace solution uh, is not so uh, popular. And maybe a couple of words about the use cases, how we can also uh, use the open banking uh, solutions. The, the first one is when we want to apply for a credit product and the customer may consent to the bank in order to get an account history in a different bank. So uh, that, that could be the uh, easiest way uh, in the customer journey uh, in case of uh, credit procedure. Uh, to, to make it easier and quicker uh, because, uh, um, for example, MBank use that, that kind of uh, service for their customers and uh, it's, it's very useful. And the, the second one is uh, when we, let's say, uh, we want to um, find the alternative uh, to uh, verification transfer in case of uh, confirming customer's identity. So in case, for example, of online shopping in installment, uh, we can uh, also, um, based on our current bank account, uh, uh, let's say, uh, make agree uh, for the bank uh, to, to get the uh, information about us, about our data to confirm our identity. So, uh, for example, uh, BNP uh, Paribas also use that kind of, of service. And uh, on that, that slide, um, I, uh, I asked the question about the leaders at the moment on the Polish market. And uh, the, the first impression is that the, the leaders at the moment are the banks, and that's correct. Uh, and uh, I try to specify uh, the, uh, the 
main players at the moment and specified the services that they provided for the customers and, and the solutions based on the open banking. And we have uh, ICE uh, solution, PEACE solution, and also applying for loans and confirmation of identity. And uh, um, I think that uh, there is uh, very important that uh, because of, um, let's say, the uh, the security uh, and the trust for the um, security of the data, of course, and the trust uh, from the customer perspective to the banks. Uh, that is the reason why the, the banks are the main uh, the main players in area of uh, implementing open banking. And we can see that we have a couple of uh, um, banks, the players like Alior Bank, Pekao, Santander Bank, ENG Bank, and Millennium that let's say cover almost all the scope of uh, open banking uh, possibilities, capabilities. And uh, I also try to uh, specify if uh, the customers are able to use it via web portal or mobile application, because also it's, it's important uh, from the customer perspective. Uh, and to be honest, uh, I also observe that it's mostly uh, explore area for the retail uh, and the consumers, uh, the users of the bank, uh, financial uh, services, and maybe the, the business uh, area, the, the business customers uh, are on the, let's say, the, the second uh, part of the implementation, uh, uh, and also we, we can consider it. Uh, and uh, based on that uh, that statement, that summary, uh, also we can see that uh, um, some of banks uh, do not implement the PIS solutions. Uh, maybe that's uh, that's why uh, I mentioned it before. And uh, the reason uh, why the banks uh, do want, don't want to implement or don't implement it at the moment is the fact that it's not, let's say, the, the big additional value. It's uh, not so easy to customer to use it. And the, the process of the make transfer, it's uh, it's too long. So maybe that's why the, that's the, the reason. But uh, of course, uh, uh, banks like M-Bank, Ben Paribas, uh, PKO, also use the, uh, for example, applying for loans or uh, confirmation or, uh, of identity uh, to, to support the, the customers. The, the next, next slide is about, uh, let's say, risks and challenges connected with the open banking and the opportunities. I try to summarize it and maybe I will not uh, um, describe everyone, uh, everything, but I think that the, the most important is that's, uh, that's what I mentioned before, uh, the security of the data from the bank perspective and from the customer's perspective uh, and the financial liability, uh, the cyber attacks and frauds because uh, um, I think that uh, mostly at the moment when we uh, discuss and consider the, the digital uh, services, digital solu solutions, that is the, the scope of the risks that we, we have to uh, mitigate and we have to handle. And uh, about the challenges which are connected with the risks, uh, we, can, uh, we can show that uh, there is a lack of trust to the non-bank companies. So also maybe that is the reason why the banks are, are the main players uh, on, the, on the market and they uh, expand and uh, implement their services uh, for the customers because uh, let's say the banks are the, uh, the public trust institution for uh, most of us. And uh, maybe that is the, the, the challenge to change the mindset to change the uh, the perspective uh, also for the for the customers and also for the um, other financial institutions and fintech so i think that it's it's quite important and uh, also the the security of banking transactions security of bank security payment security uh, that is uh, also uh, important and maybe about the opportunities uh, i think that uh, the Mm, the key opportunity to to leverage to improve 
let's say the solutions, the services based on open banking are the um, finance uh, finance management, uh, the personal uh, because of fact that uh, mostly in the retail uh, area uh, the, the solutions are implemented, but also I think that for the SMEs, for the business uh, area, it's it's also um, let's say opportunity to. Uh, to improve uh, the, the um, experience. And uh, I think that uh, also there is a good point to, cro uh, to cross sell and upsell the products and services and better QIC processes. And uh, maybe one uh, couple of words about the Mm, let's say the uh, stages of open banking because of uh, of fact that during the, the research I, I found the report uh, prepared by the KPMG and the um, uh, Polish Bank Association and let's say the conclusion was that there is a uh, f four stages uh, during the implementation of the PSD2 directive and we can uh, summarize that, uh, that the first uh, the first stage is the focusing on AP implement API implementation and compliance issues and I think that at the moment it's it's done and uh, the, most of the providers uh, and the financial institution handle it uh, and the, the second one is, is searching the ways to monetize uh, the, the possibilities to to, uh, to new uh, services, new solutions, and I think that it's still open because, as Olena mentioned, uh, it's still uh, let's say some gap on the market, uh, and I think I have impression that it, it's it can be better, and uh, it it should be some more uh, some more services and solutions based on open banking. But it's still open, uh, open uh, question. And uh, the the next stage is the taking an active role as a ISP and peace player by creating new products and services. Uh, and the, the last one um, is the is the fact that uh, there will be created a new business model, uh, bank as a service based on data analytics. And I think that uh, the, the um, two last uh, stages are still open and uh, we can observe that uh, the not only banks, other financial institutions and the fintechs try to figure out how to position uh, their sales and how to improve the experience and knowledge in that uh, that area. So basically that's, uh, that's the end of, of my story. Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, Kami, for this um, introduction regarding the open banking in Poland. Um, one more time, uh, good afternoon and thank you, Olena, for, uh, for the invitation. It's a pleasure being here, especially to share with all of you our experience as a third party provider uh, of the IES service. Um, just what Camille uh, shared with us um, clearly shows that there, there's a, the, the clear focus of the open banking on the consumer, not that much on the business. Um, I would like to share with you um, um, some very interesting statistics. Um, this year I participated in the presentation of the, one of the Polish banks um, who um, that was sharing with us statistics regarding the inquiries for the for the um, inquiries to the the bank accounts. So um, it was very very interesting, uh, impressing that ninety five percent of the inquiries that the bank had uh, during the, the last year was for the retail bank accounts. So you know this clearly shows that. The main focus today of the open banking is, is a consumer, a, a retail client. And I think that this statistic um, of Poland are pretty similar all over the, the Europe. Uh, and we here in CRIF uh, also, when we uh, analyze the statistic of our, our clients uh, of the, our solution, NEOS, for, for open banking, we also see that, that the most inquiries of our clients are connected with the, the consumer bank accounts. So, um, if we if we look at the the European context uh, today, we can also see that many startups 
are addressing many needs of the retained client, the consumer. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, and you know that for, for many, many years, um, everyone said that SME sector has been very underserved, especially financially, you know, before by banks and now it's supposed to be but the, that the startups could, you know, fill this gap. Um, so there is still huge opportunity to address a lot of different needs of SMEs um, uh, that SMEs have. Um, of course, that, that could be a lie saying that there are no startups that are trying to address the, the needs of SMEs. We have a Revolut, we have a Contop, but uh, what they do is meeting those vertical needs of SMEs. Like, for instance, financials, or of course, there are some startups that offer in the lending. So, so there is no um, a fully fledged value proposition for a small and medium business. And there is a huge space for the so-called digital disruption in the financial services for fulfilling these financial needs of the SMEs. Um, and um, the one very the great example here is a uh, step, the CRIFS client. So, so that's the use case I would like to share with you uh, today. Um, oh, it's working, sorry. Um, the, do you know that um, in 79% uh, se of the SMEs uh, in Europe um, are willing to, to change the financial service provider if they find a cheaper one or more digital one. And, you know, this is pretty um, impressive. But the main, uh, the main issue is credit and the ability to access the lending solutions, working capital solutions. So, so the companies are struggling to find a lending credit from the traditional players. So they are looking at different alternative solutions that can leverage some elements like PSD2 open banking, open finance, you know, these are two mega trends that were highlighted last year by McKinsey, Accenture, Accenture, sorry. Um, so let's take a look how a step approach this under self, small and medium uh, enterprises creating uh, a fully fledged financial, um, financial marketplace called uh, Azimut. And uh, this market place integrating uh, via IPS all the key products and services that can address the, the financial needs of um, uh, SMEs companies. Uh, so the step leverage first digital on onboarding OCR via um, FION, um, the CRIF solutions for, no for digital onboarding, the PSD2 uh, using CRIF's NEOS Open Banking for Accounting uh, Aggregation, sorry, uh, invoices aggregations, the ability to integrate payables, receivables, and uh, the same in the same tool, um, the business financial manager delivered by the Strands, the, the CRIF company, uh, that both together with the um, uh, Open Banking uh, NEOS solution and give some pr uh, predictive insight, um, business analytics, categorization of the transactions, and all the information that can give to um, give to uh, this SMEs sort of um, CFO view. Uh, and this is not all, because uh, apart the, 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 the these uh, products, um, the platform, the marketplace offers a lot of different services and products of the third parties, um, such as uh, instant lending, um, invoice discounting, uh, trade finance, acquiring, insurance, so on and so forth. Uh, and even uh, um, other very important mega trend today, ESG. So the sustainability measure, which is um, delivered by ESG score, which is also provided by the CRIF. So, uh, so, um, so you can see that this platform gives a, a, a lot of possibilities, a lot of services and, and products that are, the, are available for the SMEs. And everything is uh, um, integrated via API. So 
So it just plug in, plug, it's, it's very easy to plug in new service, new product uh, to, to have this fully fledged uh, market uh, marketplace. So if, if even today um, they all they are not available all the products or the services they can be easily at uh, in the future. So uh, let's uh, take a look how um, uh, how the the Azimuth uh, platform um, um, succeed. Um, the, uh, their, the main KPIs of the Azimuth are very impressive. Uh, in just a seven months after launch, they are live in two countries, in Spain and Italy. And they have more than 4,000 SMEs already registered to the platform. Um, from this, 94% um, have aggregated their accounts through the CRIF News IES solution. And then leveraging all the customer experience, um, this pretty much focus on the IES and B, BFM system, Business uh, Financial Management. Um, the, they have impressive 32% cross-selling ratio, which means that 32% of the customer using the uh, marketplace are already asking for some of the third-party products, services integrated to the platform. Uh, and as, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, from missile lending to US discounting, merchant acquiring, so on and so forth, so the, so, so the step uh, with the Azimuth marketplace is able to target the needs of the company in the right way and to offer the right product to the right customer. And the step platform is speeding up. Now they are about to launch in Brazil and Portugal, and they are also uh, keep working on their international uh, expansion. So uh, to sum up, how did this step leverage the CRIF and Strand's value proposition? First of all, the products, the key, um, they were integrating uh, the onboarding process, the account information services, BFM, then time to market, uh, which was very impressive. They went live in just a few months, working together with CRIF, integrating via IPA, uh, all the processes. And, and this is extremely important. They are able to go live in other countries with just a few weeks of work. And then analytics. They are using the BFM capabilities, the business insight, and the predictive analytics in order to have a lot of data to use them in their CRM and decision uh, engines. And last but not least, international capabilities. They are live in Spain, Italy, and as I mentioned, they will be pretty short uh, launching in other countries and spreading platform um, also outside the European Union. So, so this uh, this one the case study show the 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 great um, opportunity for the um, SME market that there, there's a lot of space to for services for the products uh, to fill this gap uh, for SME sector. Um, I think that there's still huge opportunity in the market for other startup for other um, uh, organizations to. To, to disrupt this financial market and, and bring a real, real value for the SMEs. So thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. And uh, thank you, Carmel. We can be we can now switch to the QA session. And yes, I do invite all our attendees to participate and ask your questions. Take this opportunity that you have open banking experts in the room. Uh, yes. So, well, first question will be from my side then. Um, as uh, Anna, you mentioned that 95% um, uh, of the calls or requests via the open APIs is coming from the individual or consumer customers and, uh, and, and like 5% for business customers. Do you see this can be changed somehow? And if yes, why? Because, for example, me being as an SME customer uh, uh, in Poland, I do want in some cases to ask a bank for the consent from my side that I and I would gladly give my consent to download the transaction history of all my banking accounts and not to download it manually with uh, with um, PDF statements. So. 
do you consider this can change in the nearest future? And if yes, how it should be done? Well, of course, uh, <laughs> uh, this, um, this is not, not easy to, to answer. Um, I think that um, um, there is a more there are more products, more services uh, for, for the consumer. I think it's easier for everyone to, to go to this, to this market. Yes, it may be more sexy to, to create something that um, that is for the consumer. We are all of the consumer. A company, the owner of the company is a consumer. So, you know, I think it's it's easier. There are maybe more opportunities or maybe markets, the more, more opportunities. And to do something for business that is, you know, important for them, that they need it. I think it needs more knowledge and experience. And, and it's more difficult to do it something which will be good. And that's why maybe... It's a, it's a challenge uh, for, for, for many companies. And, and in banks, um, you know, the, um, the perspective of the bank, um, I think that um, they, are, they are also not very much prepared to, to, to offer some value. For me, for instance, also as a user of the bank, uh, um, to, to connect the other bank to my, let's say, main bank, I don't see any value for me. So I think that from the perspective of the banks, they are not having a value proposition to both consumer or the business SMEs to connect your accounts from different banks and have a one view or some other services based on the thing that they don't see the, the value. They, I don't know if they don't see or they don't, they, they don't want to see. So, you know, this, this could be the, this, um, this is my opinion. And <laughs> they want to see. <laughs> Yes. So maybe from my perspective, I think that there's no better motivation than a money. So in case that uh, the, the banks and other financial institutions, uh, in case that they will figure out how to monetize and how mm -hmm. to bring the money to the organization based on the uh, open banking uh, capabilities, they, mm -hmm. they will leverage and they will, let's say, uh, cover that area of the, the market and they will uh, provide some specific uh, services uh, for the SMEs uh, in case that they, they will fill the money. Mm -hmm. I yes. suppose. Because we do see some examples uh, in Poland, for example, the usage of uh, um, PSD2 in the application factoring, let's say, and they do ask for a consent and then you don't need to upload your... Um, account statements and then do it automatically via the API. So we do see some examples. Yes, my my wish probably that it should be more. Uh, but yes, coming, also coming back to, to your part of the presentation, you mentioned that, correct, that the user experience, and I think this also could be one of the stoppers from the customer's uh, side, that the user experience is not so friendly. And that really practically to, you know, to aggregate these accounts in the one banking app, you practically should kind of log in and give concerns in all the applications of the banks uh, you are using. So it is it is difficult. So to see the ways how it can be changed and how, how it can be done in a more in a simpler or smoother way. To be honest, uh, I don't have a simple answer <laughs> for that question. Uh, because, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, I think that in case um, that uh, there will be uh, some easiest and cheapest way to uh, to handle that, that kind of issue, uh, in case that we have to synchronize the logging into one bank account, then mm -hmm. uh, we have to approve and authorize the uh, transaction, the other bank account. Uh, of course, uh, it can be handled by the open banking, but we still have to switch uh, on yeah. uh, on the different uh, um, uh, web portal of the uh, mobile application. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I think that maybe it could be re reason in the infrastructure uh, from the bank side. Maybe it could be reason that uh, there is no simple uh, solution to uh, to fix it. Uh, but uh, it's it's hard to say because uh, it's maybe the um, the, uh, the the specific situation in each of the banks. Uh, in case that we have to switch, for example, from the ENG bank application to the Millennium Bank application or mm -hmm. uh, to the M Bank application, so maybe uh, sometimes it's very different uh, to to link it and and connect and to make it easier. Uh, 
to make sure that the, the customer journey will be uh, will be better. Uh, but uh, I also want to, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the, the the best uh, um, uh, the way to improve it it will be when the banks uh, will figure out how to monetize it because at the moment yeah. uh, I have impression that. Uh, Mm, we have possibilities uh, of usage uh, eyes and peace solutions um, in the bank platform but it's for free for the customers mm -hmm. uh, in the retail uh, and also in the uh, business area uh, and bank don't have let's say uh, mot better motivator to improve it because it's still for free the the additional value is uh, uh, for some of the customers, uh, some consumers, but uh, there is still for free uh, from the bank perspective. So maybe mm -hmm. that's also the reason why it's not so explore from uh, from their perspective because we because the the banks have to uh, change or improve the infrastructure. They have to uh, arrange the R and D uh, teams. They they mm -hmm. have to uh, put some money to to yeah. make sure that it will work uh, correctly and uh, have to invest. But uh, maybe the the um, the feeling is that it will be still for free for for the for them, yeah, and for mm -hmm. with the final mm -hmm. the the end user uh, from the customer perspective. So mm -hmm. maybe that that is the uh, the reason. But uh, of course, I, I think that it's still open uh, question. The, the the question the question of the strategy, right? Because yeah. We do see that, uh, uh, I would say, in a smaller part of the banks in the whole region, a separate team, let's say, or separate department, separate team in the bank is devoted to open banking. So maybe this is also the one of the answers. And also, I would like you to comment, because there is also a situation that third-party providers, uh, actually in different countries of European Union, probably have different procedures i mean knowing the one in poland that you should register first to get a license to become a third party provider right to make the possibility to connect via open apis uh, with the banks and the, the the procedure looks not so simple um so maybe this is also one of the yeah yeah i think that uh, also because of fact that the the financial uh, services and the financial area are, let's say, highly, uh, let's say, regulated. And we have a couple of institutions that uh, um, pay attention to, to make sure that everything will works uh, correctly uh, from the legal perspective, from the compliance perspective, and also from the technical point of view. Uh, uh, for example, we have KNF uh, in, in Poland, and uh, that is also the, the next step for, for example, to startups and for the fintechs to uh, to uh, face the uh, the let's say opportunity to to meet KNF and uh, handle some uh, some questions and some uh, uh, questionnaires, for example, from mm -hmm. then. And uh, I, I think that maybe that is also the reason why it's not so popular at the moment. But on the other hand, I also uh, consider that maybe the the current environment is not so easy for every of, of us, uh, especially from the financial sector, uh, because we, we know that the uh, Ukraine war uh, have a big impact, the, um, let's say, the other uh, factors on the market, uh, the inflation uh, have also uh, impact for, for the financial sector. And, uh, mm -hmm. and also maybe uh, because of fact that it's not so easy to operate at the moment uh, during that, that last uh, two years uh, when the um, PSD2 uh, directive uh, um, go run. Uh, so maybe, and also the pandemic uh, not help uh, everyone. So maybe that also reason why uh, everything maybe not stop, but uh, it's uh, not so, uh, let's say, quick. Uh, let's say the the revolution in that area 
but uh, it's some kind of evolution mm -hmm. to improve and uh, change the uh, the um, solutions and change the services for the mm -hmm. um, from the customers. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe one thing that we can also mention here is the question: How many people are willing to use open banking? Because you know, in the end, it's nice that we have open APIs that we can share the data. You know, mm -hmm. Of, if you look at the um, IS service, there's a huge opportunity because you have access to all the transactions. But, you know, in the end of the day, there is an owner of this bank account who needs to give the consent. So if the user of the, if the owner, sorry, of the bank account will not give the consent, you will not get data. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the question would be, if, for instance, from the perspective of the bank, they're offering this IS service in the bank account, how many of the clients are willing to do this? Mm -hmm. maybe there is some kind of, you know, um, I don't know, they're afraid maybe, maybe they don't know what it is. So, you know, for me, this is from my experience and also for what I see around the world, that people should be educated because let, uh, we know what's open banking, but if you ask an average person from in Poland, educated one, I'm not talking about, you know, everyone like, you know, but everyone who is working even in IT business or some finance, maybe financial, nobody, but those who look uh, work in the financial, I don't know if they would know what it is. They, they may be heard like a password. Mm -hmm. open. Yeah, but do you think banks should educate yes. yeah, uh, customers, like, employees maybe as well, internally? Yes, education, what it is, what it means. And you know, uh, what um, talking about the pandemic, pandemic um, gave the opportunity for the digital revolution. Everything mm -hmm. can be done online. But, you yeah. know, on the other hand, there was a lot, a lot of different uh, attacks of hackers. So people are afraid, like, oh, I don't want to share data with someone because they want to access to my bank account. You know, it's a bank account. It's like, you know, I can give the access to the bank account to the bank. You know, this in statistics shows that bank account still is number one in Poland. Uh, it's a it's a organization number one of the of um, confidence of, of Polish people. Mm -hmm. So you know, it comes some third party provider asking, can you you log into your bank account? We want to get your transactions. It could be like this kind of oh, I'm scared. Maybe they will you know take my money. So I think that mm -hmm. the education education is the number one. So mm -hmm. the people know what it is. They understand how to use it. What it means for them. And of course the value proposition. Because if there is no value proposition, no one will collect the bank accounts. If it's a consumer, mm -hmm. it's the same means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Yes. We have a comment uh, from uh, Mikhail. Thank you. Thank you for your, um, for your comment that better UX for PYS means more digital transactions for the bank and more incomes. Of course. Yes, right. And more cross-sell of the products as uh, Anna, you showed in your, in your example and case study of Azimut platform exactly so the the income or the revenues are coming from the from the new transactions from the new cross-sell uh, banking or financial products or partners products depends depends on the on the strategy um, of the bank exactly okay so uh we should uh, wrap up don't we don't have uh, questions uh, at the moment so Maybe some final words from you, Anna and Kamil, to, to close this webinar. Um, so maybe Anna. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Kamil, you start because I okay. don't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I will start. Uh, so basically, from from our perspective, as a software company and as a let's say. Uh, um, entity that, uh, let's say, manage the information, the data for uh, the, the customer. We feel that open banking is still the open subject and there mm -hmm. is a still a huge uh, gap to fill in. And we, we are sure that, uh, that uh, there is a great possibility to, to use it. And, uh, and I think that uh, as Anna showed on their part of the presentation, we have a couple of ideas how to handle the, that challenges and how to, for example, ban, bundle a uh, couple piece of the services like onboarding process, like 
uh, access to the account and maybe uh, make some score, some creditworthiness of, of the customers, and then uh, help, uh, for example, the KYC process. So uh, I think mm -hmm. that we have still lot to, uh, a lot uh, to, to learn uh, and we have still a lot to offer uh, for the market, but we, we have to, from the one hand, uh, let's say, change the mindset that open banking uh, is good for us, for all of us, as a provider, as a customer, and also uh, as a financial institution. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, uh, that is very important that you mentioned, uh, Olena and Anna, the, um, the education is the most important that uh, factor, because when we will know something, uh, we'll have, let's say, the trust for, for it, mm -hmm. uh, for the online banking uh, solutions, and also we'll not afraid about the uh, security, about uh, our data, about, uh, for example, share the, um, uh, the data of authorization for our bank account. So I think that the education is still the, the most important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the digital revolution has just started, so we will we are sure that you know there will be more and more business processes coming to the digital space. Like for instance, we are waiting here in Poland for the leasing to be able to be like fully digital. And I think that sometimes mm -hmm. even the, um, the legislation is a blocker because leasing companies are not that very interested at the moment to to invest in some online solutions uh, where they could leverage, for instance, PSD two and other systems. So I think that this also could be a great opportunity for many financial institutions, for the startups to, you know, to bring the value for, for those SMEs. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your contribution, Kamil and Anna. Thank you very much to all our attendees. So thank you and see you next time online during our next webinar.